welcome and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before we dive into our panel, I was uh, kindly asked uh, to prepare something so that uh, you understand what we're going to talk about. So, uh, this year, via we, Croatians, are celebrating 15 years of the participation uh, in the media sub-program, which is part of the Creative Europe program, and the only EU fund uh, devoted to the development of the European audiovisual industry. What I also would like to highlight, and you see the logo on, my, on your left and on your right side, NEM, uh, is, NEM Zagreb is the first Croatian market, TV market, to be supported by media, starting with 2022, being on the same list as Marché du Film in Cannes, Berlinale co-production market. I'm just highlighting uh, the big names out. And uh, uh, in a list of a total of 43 markets to be supported by media. So I think we need to also give applause to this. as uh, your success story is also my success story, and it's European success story. But let's go back to the results. So, um, in 15 years, uh, we secured 14 million euros for the development of 91 creation films, TV series, uh, four shorts, uh, six video games. Uh, we also had the production, which is going to be focused also on our, of our, of our panel, of two creation TV series, six creation uh, film festivals, ten creation distributors were working hard on promoting and uh, securing distribution of non uh, national European films in Croatia, but we also have a total of uh, 201 Croatian organizations participating in 611 projects with the participation of women of 62.8%. So, we are in a programming period starting in 21 and it's going to last until 27, and as you can see, what we need to highlight here is that uh, media as the only fund for the Euro European audiovisual industry takes uh, a bigger chunk of, of the Creative Europe cake, which is uh, understandable since uh, we have 17 calls. And uh, number three something that highlights the whole program. And th this was something also that was highlighted in the previous panels, which is of course, collaboration is the must. Uh, nurturing talents and giving uh, an opportunity to emerging and young talent is also something that is very much appreciated. But also, um, how do we engage with our audiences when we have an idea or script ready? Uh, among uh, those uh, cross-cutting priorities, uh, it's again highlighted the collaboration, but also greening. Uh, because we also need to be sustainable and uh, diversity, including the gender balance and inclusion. And we have three sub-programs. Media is the only one devoted to the film industry culture for the other culture and creative sectors, and the cross-sectoral uh, that combines creative innovation lab, journalism, press and media. What you need to understand that uh, it's a quite a big amount of countries participating in the program, and it's really high competition. So 38 countries are participating in media, and they're divided into the high and low audiovisual capacity. Uh, I need to often uh, underline that the UK is out, uh, that we have a new country in Liechtenstein, and that the Poland is no longer considered to be uh, small, uh, no longer considered to be a uh, high capacity country, but it's becoming low audiovisual capacity. And what is good, since uh, we are focusing here in, in the region and on the region, uh, that countries that are not part of the EU, like Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Serbia, are participating fully in media. Ukraine, Georgia and Tunisia are participating partially, which means that not all calls are available for them. This is how the uh, division of the countries looks like, and uh, I would like to highlight 
Europe likes to divide us all the time. So uh, in Group A, uh, you see there is Croatia, there is Czech Republic, Estonia, Greece, Romania, Poland, and Portugal. And in Group B, you see uh, the rest of the countries. Uh, what is the difference? Because we are called low revision capacity. So Group A was really, really successful in the previous programming period. And this means, for example, if someone from Croatia applies for a scholarship at a training initiative supported by media, we might not get this scholarship. But someone coming from Luxembourg uh, might get this scholarship because they were not as successful as Croatians, which is really absurd because we know that Luxembourg has a lot of uh, source of financing and, of course, we cannot always uh, divide countries black and white. We also need to understand the territory, language, and the sources of financing. I also like to point out that some things are not quite well there. Okay, so those 17 calls are divided into three clusters, and my dear colleagues, uh, media desks from Bulgaria, Kamen Balkanski and Una Domazetovsky from Serbia, they know how it's sometimes difficult to um, keep updated with all the changes in the calls, but also with all the questions we receive. However, our focus, and this is the, also the basis of the media uh, sub-program, is the content. So this is the source and this is the focus of the program, and this is going to be also uh, our uh, uh, talking points for the panel afterwards. So, let's see the content. Uh, this table, uh, in terms of uh, be aware of the rule, 10 slash 19, I purposely uh, highlighted here because um, one might wonder if you're co-producing, for example, with Ukraine, uh, how we can do it so that it's still uh, eligible for media. So the important thing is, yes, this is allowed, but you need to be aware of the pointing system for each genre, and you need to have more than 50% of the participants, film professionals coming from the media countries. So this is allowed, but be aware of the uh, percentage of the participation of the filmmakers uh, coming from the media countries, it needs to be higher. Co-development. So it was introduced in 21. It is the X single uh, call. And it allows what is the highlight of the program for the countries to collaborate. So two countries from uh, two different media countries, uh, two production companies coming from two different media countries are developing one audiovisual work, film or TV series. Um, in terms of uh, money, uh, in 21, the European Commission somehow raised the financing involved for the development of your projects. So you can see per one audiovisual work, mm -hmm. you can reach out, depending on the partners involved, 240,000 euros, which is not bad. As some of you know me, I like to analyze the results. And I like to see who stands out there and who is the usual suspect and who is unusual suspect. So you see, of course, who are the usual suspects. So imagine France in 21 had 25 co-development, uh, uh, 25 different schemes uh, to be supported under the co-development. Germany 19 and so on. Croatia was also uh, good on the list because it was the first uh, first call, and all the first calls are, and especially this one in 21, uh, was uh, really challenging. But then, for, uh, then we have also uh, with three supported projects, Iceland on board, and two supported projects, Serbia. On purpose, I'm highlighting the countries that are going to be part of the panel. Uh, in 22, uh, let's see, there were less projects awarded. And you can see that uh, there is a high number of countries to participate, because this is the 
essence. They want to have as many collaborations as possible. And again, you see the usual suspects, starting with France, 26 projects, Germany 17, and so on. And all of a sudden, you see Croatia with seven. I was really congratulated by my colleagues. What did you do in Croatia? So to have seven co-development uh, projects. But uh, uh, after Croatia, there is also Serbia with four and Iceland with one co-development. And you see uh, the total amount kind of reduced. And you need to also understand that there is 23 countries participating, sorry, 35 countries participating in the co-development call. This is good to remember when we come to mini slate and slate. Mini Slate is one company developing a minimum of two up to three projects, including one short, which is really good to highlight for the emerging talent. Uh, and you see the maximum grant is a bit different, and it's only devoted for the low divisional capacity countries, like Croatia, Iceland, and Serbia. Those are the mini slate results. So Croatia did quite well uh, with three mini slates. Uh, we also have Serbia with one. And there you see also how it went uh, in 2022. So Croatia was again leading with four slates. Slate is for all countries and it's quite competitive uh, because uh, uh, you need to develop, as you can see, from three to five projects, again, young and emerging talent, and a higher amount of financing involved. And this is how it looks, the situation 21, usual suspects, but then unusual suspects. I found, for example, Greece, Lithuania also taking a chunk of the slate money, which is really high competitive. And in 2022, uh, there is also, for example, Slovenian board and Serbia as well. Now, this is the most complicated one because you really need to solve the puzzle. That's why every single sentence is in a different color. Uh, since it's the only call for the production. What, so it, it can be a consortium or one production company applying with at least or a minimum two television or broadcasters. And you see in blue, this is very tricky rule, license period, because broadcasters in uh, smaller or lower visual capacity countries are not so willing to uh, like this blue sentence, uh, pre-sale maximum of seven years and co-production maximum of 10 years. They like to take the rights forever. Of course, Europe is not allowing this. And there we go with, the, with, the, with, the, uh, with other details, 40% of financing secure, 50% needs to come from the media, countries and so on, but the blue one is very important to remember. So let's have a look at the results. In 21, you see it's quite some chunk. It's a production money, uh, 98 millions. And uh, you see how the countries are distributed. Of course, wonders are, for example, Czech Republic, Estonia, Greece, that are on board having uh, one project supported. And in 22, there was quite a drop down in terms of the total financing involved. Uh, but we have also, for example, uh, Serbia, and I think before we also had Bulgaria with two TV and online projects. So, uh, I did it, I think, in, uh, in quite kind of condensed way, so that we understand what we're going to talk about when it comes to the panel. And now I would like to invite Ankice Juric Tilic presenting The Last Socialist Artifact, and Milena Jambasovic and Jonas Marger Ingolfsson presenting The Wool being supported by media. Please come to the stage. Oh, now I can also relax. <laughs> I need to stand, so let me move to a couple of slides that are still uh, slides, uh, small uh, things that I need to share. 
Um, since the focus is on TV series, um, uh, there is a recent survey that I would like you also to, uh, to remember, and it's called Media Outlook, and uh, the European Commission did it uh, at the European level to understand consumer behavior when it comes to watch uh, TV series. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, traditional TV channels are the most frequently used, uh, with 71%. Uh, then is 60% subscription VOD, and 24% going to cinemas. Uh, all of, the, of those three means that uh, 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 one of 10 consumers is watching one TV series once a day, once a week, and once a month. Uh, additionally, 14% of cinema goers uh, go uh, once in a three months. So uh, there is a reduction of people uh, going to cinemas. So when they were asked why do they choose a subscription VOD platform, they say, first of all, because it's affordable, 32% because of the price, then the availability of wide variety of films and TV series, and 25% because of the high quality of films and TV series. And uh, they also, uh, when they were presenting uh, from the European Commission, they played a little game with us to understand what is this that... Uh, is selling point uh, in choosing the next audiovisual content, and believe it or not, it's not a director, uh, it's a genre. Mm -hmm. Then it's a storyline, dialogues and characters. In terms of the genre, the first one is crime, thriller and mystery, then it's action and adventure, and then it's comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, out of those EU consumers, 80% would still choose the US content, 76% would choose home country TV films and series, and 71% uh, films and TV series coming from other European countries. And when asked what countries or regions EU consumers would like to see more, they still say 45% the US, but very close, it's 44% home country. 28% UK and 28% other EU countries. Just so I understand that uh, we're going to discuss media success stories, but when it comes to TV series, mm -hmm. uh, as they're not only that uh, they're trendy, but it's something uh, that after COVID became so popular as well, and uh, something that uh, uh, is still uh, evolving when it comes to the low individual capacity countries. So, um, I would like to start with Ankitsa. Mm -hmm. She's the owner and producer of a uh, well-established uh, production company, Kinorama, uh, mm -hmm. since 2003. And Ankitsa is a veteran, <laughs> if I can say it like this yes, in English. Yeah. <laughs> uh, discuss but, it later. <laughs> yeah, but when it comes to media. So, Ankitsa was the first one to receive the first creation project, Coco and the Ghosts, a uh, film, film for yeah. children. Uh, uh, for the media development, and then somehow it continued uh, with first slate, two slates, three slates. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's like it goes on, yeah. <laughs> so uh, call Ankitsa, yeah, uh, uh, to apply. Uh, but uh, since we, you really went through the old media the new media when media merged with culture into creative europe program and now you are entering the third programming mm -hmm. period so you have the experience in all three so uh i also would like to tackle what do you think has changed for better and especially when it comes to our national financing because at that time in 2008 creation audiovisual center didn't have this backup in terms of the development money but now today mm -hmm. it's a completely different uh, story Yes, it is. I think uh, if you talk to any producer at the planet, especially in Europe, if you ask what is the, like, the biggest issue, the, the most uh, difficult problem for the company is the cash flow first. Mm. And then the second one is development because it's time consuming, energy consuming, long lasting, and you have to finance it yourself. Uh, so, uh, very few producers can develop 10 projects at the moment, which is, uh, I mean, you have to uh, develop many 
to be able to make some. Uh, so support for development is crucial. It's really crucial. So for us, media development um, was uh, really extremely important, not only because of the money, but also as a stamp that there is a quality acknowledged already by some mm -hmm. uh, uh, supranational fund, uh, which uh, means a lot, especially in low capacity countries. Uh, you know, to get a stamp from somewhere else and you, if you are working at a market where only like two or three or five TV series are produced per year, uh, then it's not easy to, uh, to develop a content like that, to find a buyer and then to, to secure the, the production standard that you aim for. Yeah. So these are the things where media is really uh, great and also it was a push for the National Film Centre mm -hmm. to introduce development fund and uh, which led later to the latest thing that uh, Croatia is uh, uh, part of the country, one of the countries that uh, joined the Yurimaj initiative uh, mm -hmm. uh, about the financing TV series. So I think there are many things uh, that are very important, but also the development of the company and development of the market. And it looks like minor influence, but I think at the end it, it was really a strong impact on the, on, the national, on the national level when it comes to the industry development and everything else. So how media was pushing uh, yes, the audiovisual pushing. center to introduce... Uh, yes, we skills. really hate these yeah. applications, but <laughs> overall... <laughs> I don't think that we even <laughs> like it. <laughs> but overall, the effect is, is fantastic. It's yeah. really great. Uh, thank you. This is just like a short intro. I would mm -hmm. like to now move to uh, Milena. Uh, since uh, um, you had this first experience when applying to the media in this new programming period, uh, and uh, you established your own company in 2016, Film Broad Production, and uh, also have quite best experience uh, in uh, producing the films, but also a TV series. One of them is the second season of uh, Bessa, which was meant uh, to different territories, so, and it was quite popular. So, what's uh, your secret story? How, uh, first of all, your experience when applying to media? Did it open up some new worlds? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's challenging. I mean, coming from this region is very challenging, starting uh, especially with the series, since we don't have um, sources for uh, developing. Um, financial sources for developing mm -hmm. in our own country, so we have to reach funds, and that's why media is very important. But it's, it's also a complicated application, it takes time. You need to be able to develop to a certain uh, stage your project anyway before the application. So as Ankita said, we are just, we, we need to invest by ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and it takes time. I mean, especially if you, if you want to develop a series which needs a longer time to be developed, a few years, uh, and you want to make it in position internationally, it really takes financials and sources. I mean, when, when we did BESA, that was another company, Adrenaline Company, mm -hmm. I was joint producer. Um, it, it, it was uh, one of the first examples that we, uh, we actually shot in a different countries. It was really production-wise very high level. So, I mean, eventually it succeed, but it was challenged, for sure. But when it comes to the financing at the national level, so if I understood correctly, the Film Center Serbia supports uh, Mostly uh, films, films, yeah, right? They, so you, no, they're not included in the TV series. How they don't support? No. So where do you go uh, for well, additional uh, funding? Uh, well, uh, well, as I said, <laughs> you have. I mean, uh, usually when you go to broadcasters and you sign the contract, mm -hmm. like that's that's the sum that you're getting for production and mm -hmm. developing and everything. That it's not like separate developed. Uh, pa uh, fund, but you're just you need to you need to in, uh, unfortunately invest by yourself as a producer, and uh, the other option is uh, media 
mm -hmm. development, co-development or TV series. You have to have right partners on board for that. Um, also, good thing, uh, I, I found good things. It's like maybe small amount of money, but it's still worth it. It's going to the pitching forums. Mm -hmm. And we, like, the moment we introduced this project first was here at NEM last year, where we won the first prize. Then we were at the Balkan, uh, series Balkan pitch, the rough cut way, uh, from the, the rough way? yeah online. <laughs> <laughs> And um, that was another uh, place where we represented uh, the project, and uh, also we uh, I, uh, I worked with uh, two wonderful ladies, Valeria and Helen, to mm -hmm. prepared for the pitching, which is I think it's very important to present the project internationally, to know how to present project internationally. So we won the prize there. So those are like you collect money here and there. Uh, just to uh, refer to what you said, uh, um, because NEM has also pitching and in different markets you also have different pitching events and of course uh, it's always good uh, uh, to win the pitching awards, so to, to attend the pitching events where there is a financing award. Um, why actually we introduced as desks coming uh, from uh, Bulgaria, Serbia, Greece, Hungary, uh, North Macedonia, uh, Croatia, um, and I may be missing somewhere else. Uh, the thing is the following. So um, there was a moment when new programming period was introduced and the European uh, Commission said, oh, we have this idea, we will test this pilot project and we're going to call it Writing European. And they actually had a very ambitious goal and they wanted to bring writers from all over the Europe to work in writers' rooms so that finally someone uh, as a writer and that is a physical person can apply somewhere and work with somebody else so that it doesn't go through the legal entity, production company, etc. But, of course, there, are, there were some strong lobbies coming from um, usual suspects, let's call them like this, uh, not to name them, that they wanted again uh, to introduce the uh, writer's room to, through specific organizations which uh, 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 always exclude, excludes uh, projects coming from the region. It's a very competitive market when it comes to the TV series, and it's so difficult to enter such pitching events focusing um, on the TV series, and of course that uh, 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 the, the advantage is always for the usual suspects. So we, we decided as the desks to introduce uh, a pitching event that will focus only on our stories so that we break all the stereotyping because uh, the rumor has it that uh, somehow it's assumed that we need to write always uh, corruptive uh, war stories but we can also deliver something else and we, we bring the markets in the online event so that they are already familiar uh, with the projects, uh, giving free access to, to serious many and similar, etc. etc. So it's important to attend the pitching uh, events. Sometimes might be difficult. Uh, so it's always good to find the balance between those that are at uh, strong markets, but also what the desks are doing as their own uh, initiatives. But uh, I just would like to add something. I mean, um, as I see, like in this region, it's not very common to have like uh, two, three years of development for the TV series. Uh, usually, uh, it goes very fast, quickly into production. So I, I would like to point out and uh, raise up that awareness toward the broadcasters that uh, they need to understand there's like a, a period, long period, which costs. And if you have, if you, I mean, for a series, the usual thing is to have writer's room. And in the writer's room, you have, I don't know, three writers, four or five, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it takes some financing for that to be able to do. So as much time you have and much people on board in that sense, in research, whatever, I mean, the series in the end would be better, of course. Yeah, because we all aim to the quality, because yes. we also want to deliver quality mm -hmm. projects to our audiences that we, from time to time, uh, underestimate. So that development money is crucial. Yes. We also respect the gender balance. It's good to have... Uh, 
be honest. Is that the only reason I'm here? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's for me also. <laughs> the, <laughs> <chaplain>. <laughs> for the check, you know. I'm sorry, I need a sentence. Exaggerate. Uh, because I like the rules, but, you know, if we go into extremes, you know how it goes. Uh, so, um, uh, the story of Act 4 started in uh, 2022, mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, I like your motto. It's Nordic content for a global audience. Four screenwriters, three executive producers, two financing producers, two lawyers, one hugely successful actor. Really good um, selling point, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's not only that uh, you started in uh, 2022, but each one of you uh, brought your uh, professional experience working for uh, either Saga Film, Glass River, or uh, Yellowbird, so that are quite acclaimed uh, Nordic and Scandinavian uh, production companies. So let me hear your story and your experience with uh, media. Right. Um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, thank you, Martina, for a great presentation. Uh, I was. Uh, uh, you uh, found uh, Iceland. <laughs> I saw Iceland a few times, and I'm an absolute sucker for statistics. And I just, uh, you know, <laughs> love to be seeing all of that gathered. So thank you for that. I will um, compare all the previous ones. So. Oh, wonderful! Thank you. Um, yeah, no, we've uh, <clears throat> we are a, a, a quite experienced company in in in, in Iceland, although a new one. Uh, the whole team consists of of. Can I also? Refer to myself as a veteran, like yeah. you. <laughs> well. um, <laughs> and uh, 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 we, we've we've done okay. Yeah, um, we have a you know great relationship with the industry in Iceland and across the Nordics and Europe, I think. And we, of course, have all in our uh, 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 previous lives at the previous companies uh, uh, worked with uh, media. And actually, of course, through Act Four with uh, Milena as well. Um, we have been fortuitous enough to uh, uh, um, um, enjoy uh, the grant both from the TV and online for uh, some of our productions mm -hmm. throughout the years, uh, as well for the development. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be, um, you know, my experience with it is at first it was, you know, to me, Creative Europe Media. It was um, coming out of Iceland, which is a small country. This is big, this is across Europe. Uh, it's almost like a mythical creature that you can apply to and uh, can grant you money. Uh, <laughs> but the more you get into it, and the more that you read it's the fun, content, right? and you're like, it's, you, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't call it fun. <laughs> yeah, let's not get, you know, overexcited here. Um, I am a lawyer at core, so I do enjoy the applications, yes, um, but um, they, they are actually uh, not only beneficial, you know, in the financing sense of it, but also to force you to sit down, take a look at the company, mm -hmm. take a look at the project, structure it properly, put it up in a, in a presentable form, uh, and, you know, even though you get the grant or not, all that work does help you as you bring the project to market at later stages, in my opinion. Um, and then if, if you get the financing, of course, that's, that's a huge plus. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, I was in Iceland in the 2019. Um, I was invited by Löwe, at the time CEO of the Icelandic Film Center, and uh, I also analyzed the results. And, you know, it's okay to see uh, co-development. At the time, it was called a single, but then this ex-TV programming, it was like this, Iceland, 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 Iceland. Like, you were really taking a lot of money. Sorry about that. Um, no, no. <laughs> No, 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 it was like, what's the catch? <laughs> catch 22. Right. Uh, because you are such a small country, and uh, uh, I understand that the Icelandic Film Center has f production for the TV series, but you also have the... The, the Nordic Fund, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the, uh, the Icelandic... Uh, f uh, uh, film fund is is not to belittle it, but it's 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 a limited fund. Um, um, but the uh, Nordic uh, 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 broadcasters and streamers and the Nordic Council uh, uh, have joined forces in the uh, Nordisk Film TV Fund, which is the um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nordic film and TV font. 1990. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's based in Norway. Yeah. Uh, and basically, uh, 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 once your, um, your, your, your project uh, is being broadcasted or streamed uh, or been sold to uh, two of the participating uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, parties to the fund in two separate countries, uh, you can apply to that. And that's a huge support as well. And um, it's always, you know, it's, it's, it's coming out of Iceland, uh, again, a small country, uh, whenever you get these international funds, be it the Nordic one or the media, small or big grants, uh, 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 it's, it's hugely motivating. Mm -hmm. Demotivating. Mot Not motivating. Oh, I'm like, no, okay. very motivating. <laughs> it's hugely motivating. Because, uh, uh, you know, uh, as you were talking about yeah. earlier, developing something, it takes a yeah. long time and, uh, and it costs a lot of money. And the, mm -hmm. the best thing you can invest in, in, in my opinion, I entered the industry as a writer, so naturally my opinion is that the best thing you can invest in is, is, is time and development mm -hmm. to let it really, you know, brew. Um, and you know, to along the way, to to be granted something from you know the Nordic Fund or the Media Fund is it's just so motivating to keep going. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm curious because uh, not only in Iceland, but uh, you probably saw in my presentation, it's also Denmark, Sweden, <laughs> uh, Norway, Finland. How do you guys, I mean, do uh, get all those broadcasters on board, especially for the? Uh, TV and online call because it, it is really difficult uh, in our countries coming from the region. What was the? How do you? We're just so charming, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> how to explain um, this? Win -win and, yeah, tell us your secret. There is no secret. It's it's it's. I mean, uh, I can of course mostly attest to what it's like uh, doing this in Iceland. Uh, although, of course, I have a good relationship with, with many producers in, 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 in the other Nordic countries. Um, but I do think that, you know, Iceland, uh, it's a, again, I've told it many times, it's a small country where not even 400,000 people that live there are basically all friends on Facebook. Um, and, you know, we, um, we're used to going out and co-producing. We're used to going to the market and getting the majority of the financing from abroad. Out of necessity, yeah. Out of That's pure necessity, because, yeah. you know, even mm -hmm. as great as the, uh, uh, um, the uh, broadcasters are in Iceland and the platforms are there, and the telecoms uh, uh, who really do support the industry mm -hmm. and are really willing to buy and, and, and portray uh, Icelandic content, uh, um, it's not enough because it's also a very expensive country. So it does cost a lot of money to do there and we have to go out and get it. And we, that's what we've always had to do. So in this age of co-production, as we've, it's a kind of a buzz term going around now, um, to us it's, it's just So it's easy, life. <laughs> it's easy uh, yes, and uh, especially to fulfill the letter of commitment for the TV and online call. Sure. So it's easy uh, to get. Uh, those letter of commitments from broadcasters. I wouldn't say easy, but you know, yeah. you have to have a good project and you have to know how to present it and, and that's what we've been doing for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yet we can have a great project, but we are not able to get a letter of interest. Yeah, that's what they wanted to now no. jump in <laughs> into the experience. Yeah. Yeah. So because this letter, which is not committing, which is let's say letter of interest uh, for us, it's impossible to get it at the local market. We just cannot get it. Mm -hmm. uh, we only we can only you know actually set up the collaboration and then we can get a letter. But by that time we already have a contract. So. I think it's the same in your country. I mean, well. uh, for this application that we, for uh, co development, it was crucial that we had LOI from uh, Telecom. But uh, lucky enough, they, they got introduced with the project here at NEM. And then uh, we had a meeting in Berlinale, and I explained to them that I'm planning to apply for media. And not only for media, but if you want to go out and talk to financiers, co producers, they all want to know whether. Uh, Local, locally, yes. they support yeah. you or not. Yeah. I mean, and uh, that pro approval, approval is actually letter of in, uh, intent first. So for this application, I, one of the crucial thing 
definitely was in the paperwork to have LOI. Luckily enough, I said, they understood that. So um, they like the project, they're willing to follow the project, and hopefully, at some point, we will reach that, uh, um, that level, hopefully, when we apply for production media uh, money sub um, support. And, uh, and then we would need LOC. And that, yes. <laughs> that, that's another game. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'd now touch the, the TV series. So I will go back to Ankitsa with the last socialist artifact. Uh, firstly, it was supported. And it's the only TV series, if you remember the, one of the first slides, that was supported uh, as a main coordinator. Uh, for the development, but also for the productions. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the development, uh, uh, it was in 2018, and then for uh, production, it was in 2020. 2020. So, yeah. like uh, 50,000 euros for the development, 290,000 only for, for your production. part for the production. Uh, and I'm very proud and happy that uh, the recent Creative Europe uh, report for the 21-22 highlighted uh, the last socialist artifact uh, as uh, uh, the, one of the most, uh, let's say, prominent uh, TV series to be supported by media and which also won a series many awards as the best TV series in 2000. International Panorama Program, yeah. yes, of series many. Where we pitched the project first, as you were talking about the Pitching is an important tool for us to cross the border to enter to secure some presence on this market that is overwhelmed with everything. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we started at Series Mania and uh, ended premiering there, but the path was uh, quite uh, challenging, mm -hmm. as you were saying, to, to avoid how, how the world you, problem. How did you solve the puzzle for uh, TV programming? Uh, I, I mean. Uh, uh, first, I, as you know, but uh, the others do not, uh, my background is in feature films and I still see myself as a feature film producer. Uh, so I do TV series only when I see the content that is suitable for television. So uh, my uh, aim and my agenda is only to do mini TV series. I'm not into, you know, several seasons, 12 episodes kind of TV series. But when I see something amazing that I want to put on screen, that cannot hold two hours, but six. Then I go. Then I go for this. So, the, uh, so I was developing it with my feature film co-producers. You know, with the people from the industry that I knew well. Uh, so it was a co-production with Slovenia, Serbia, and Finland. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the first financing came from media. Then the, some some uh, small financing, development financing from Croatian Audiovisual Center. Then uh, we applied to national television, failed once, then got the financing on the second round, but I was on the next year. But I was uh, firm to do it as uh, international co-productions for two reasons. One was because I wanted to have a, a high production standard, meaning nine shooting days per episode, you know, and uh, travels and all of this. And the second one was to, to have a wider market. So. That was the aim from the beginning, so we started with a, a Slovenian uh, television, uh, actually it was Vojo at the end, but uh, Pro Plus mm -hmm. Television, and they pre-bought pre the series, and then uh, we had a Lithuanian partner that dropped off later because of COVID and, and uh, uh, change, uh, changes in the financing structure, mm -hmm. but uh, we also had a uh, uh, pre-sales from uh, uh, Serbian national television that was also crucial so these were my partners to be able to apply mm -hmm. to, to, media. to media and then uh, uh, media was uh, extremely sweet money for two reasons one was uh, because we shot during the worst uh, mm -hmm. peak of pandemic and we mm -hmm. had to stop because uh, key people from the crew got sick and we had to uh, close the set for a few weeks and uh, uh, which was of course additional costs and everything so if there were no media money we would be you know like <laughs> bankrupt so that was uh, life saving for us and also opened the possibility to apply to the uh, tax incentive in Croatia because it was the money that was brought from abroad not a Croatian 
uh, creation mm -hmm. money. So th there was a double benefit of this media money for us. And we ended up doing it in a way we wanted to, to do it and uh, in a, a proper time frame without, uh, I mean, you always compromise, but with a very few, you know, restrictions caused by the budget or, or anything else. So yeah, it was, it was a beautiful story, but the, the whole process was five years. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mara, just to say that, yeah. <laughs> not to. <fool. laughs> and did uh, the award at Serious Mania uh, push you and uh, did you find the. Yeah, I mean, it had a beautiful festival run and we won many awards, and uh, now it is on Arte online uh, mm -hmm. and in Filmin in Spain, and I still hope to get some more sales and uh, to, to reach some more markets. But I wanted to say one thing, yeah. although we discussed about it last year here at NEM, uh, this co-producing is actually win-win because for, uh, uh, you, you get a high quality product with a high production value and you exchange talents and you make teams that otherwise you can't make mm -hmm. and everyone gets high quality product, you know? All the, te all the uh, televisions involved they get a high quality pro product. And what we were struggling with uh, was that we were missing this legal frame, how to mm. co-produce, you know? And we were using the film routines established by European Convention and you imagined all this, we used it. And this is how we made this collaboration and we had to convince all the partners at stake that the rights should be taken for seven years only, that we need to uh, free the other territories for other partners. This is something that in a film business goes without saying because the rules are there forever, uh -huh. for a long time. But a TV, TV uh, uh, collaboration, it's not that firm, it is not... Uh, you know, like there is no umbrella under which we co-produce, so we need to, to create it. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this media TV programming helps, and also Urimash uh, TV uh, support would also help to frame, uh, to somehow frame the way we collaborate. In. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, mm -hmm. that's very important to, under, to understand, that being support from some European fund, like media, Urimash, you are on the map. Yeah, I mean, it, people it's, it's, follow your pro, pro, um, your series, and uh, coming from the small capacity countries, mm -hmm. that's for us the most important, and that's how we're getting on the map. I mean, uh, look at the, what Scandinavia did with, with their dramas. I mean, we can do it also in Balkan. We have fantastic stories, but we need support and understanding from the broadcasters in that sense, that we need to apply for the European funds and to understand what is the politics beside that. Mm. If and we want to be on the map, I mean, we yeah. are, we, everybody needs to be involved, including the broadcasters, yes. not uh, to really wait so long for the... LOIs and LOCs, because uh, uh, you can also come and Anuna back me up, but uh, there were so many ineligible projects uh, because the, not only, I mean, from the region, at, in general, at the European level, because uh, producers uh, really had difficulties to, uh, they would say, and, and it was like this at some past years, so you could say, now I have LOI, but in one or two months I will get the LOC, but now immediately in the application you, you really need to have LOC, otherwise uh, it's... You are not it's, eligible, uh, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, would you like to add something on, on that? Uh, I mean, you are a lawyer, actually, so you do <laughs> <laughs> as well, all those legal uh, yeah, arrangements. Yeah. There's, there's a reason I quit law. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, but uh, uh, I would like to echo what you said, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, um, you know, oftentimes uh, we hear people say that, uh, that it's limiting uh, uh, what producers can do with their content, that uh, the media, for example, for the TV and online grant has this seven-year limit or ten years mm -hmm. on CoPro uh, for a license. But... Um, it's a really powerful tool in all negotiations to say that we're, you know, dependent on trying to get the media grant for this. Mm -hmm. And if we want to do that, we can't do more than seven years. It's, 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 it's the benefit of the producer uh, 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 that these rules are in place. Um, and I'm very happy about that. 
Yeah, and I mean, there is of course much more money involved. It didn't fit in my uh, puzzle mm -hmm. uh, sentence slide, but uh, from 300,000 euros to 500,000 euros if it's a, from documentary to animation, but also for the fiction it can go reach up to one, uh, then to two million euros depending on the production budget if budget. it's uh, between 10 to 20 million euros and, and above. So. Uh, everything is somehow uh, needs to be in balance, you know, if you want to stand out uh, and to be present uh, in a very competitive market. So we also need to understand the, the rules of the game. So mm -hmm. we all need to uh, be involved and participate so that we would really have good quality TV series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we, we touched also pitching. I also wanted to touch uh, training initiatives mm -hmm. because uh, uh, it took really long time to educate um, uh, Croatian. Uh, I, I, I'm always speaking from the Croatian point of view. Uh, Croatian film professionals to really go out to train themselves uh, because uh, uh, they were not used to it and uh, they didn't uh, see any added value in it. So um, we have now on board uh, Milena, who was the first uh, uh, Serbian uh, producer to attend uh, EAVE. We have Ankica, who... Not first. But not the first, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah but uh, uh, one of the first ones. But uh, uh, Ankica, who is now already group leader, and we were all the time discussing how it's important to have mm -hmm. a point of view from a small country yes. and such training yes. initiatives, mm -hmm. because it seems also when you're also applying, this is the, uh, the, the, the uh, other side of the story, mm -hmm. there was always missing this point of view from, uh, from a small country to understand our stories mm -hmm. and the project. So uh, I, I think that uh, uh, having you on board uh, in Yave also made a huge difference uh, in terms of understanding and educating. If you want to add something uh, on No, it. I mean, I remember when I did all these trainings, all my mentors were from France, Germany or UK. So I felt like <laughs> like yeah. an orphan, you know? <laughs> so, and when they start start talking numbers or markets, so, and then I feel like, oh, what am I doing here? This is hopeless. <laughs> yeah. uh, but now, actually, the, the, the landscape changed, changed. and yeah. there are uh, there are many people from small countries and low capacity audiovisual <laughs> markets, which is great because we also exist and we need to fight for our voice. So when we are talking about inclusion, we are the ones who feel endangered, you know, mm -hmm. we felt endangered. But now uh, I think uh, it's much better. And of course, Italy can offer so much more writers because they are 60 million country people, you know, and we are not even four. So there is this balance in numbers, of course, uh, usually also in talents because of this mm -hmm. quantity, I think. And they also, they can afford to have genre and all of this that, I mean, we can reach the genre when we will produce 30 films per year or 30 TV series, then we can talk about genre. This way, mm. when, when the numbers are so few, it's very difficult to, to work on that. But anyway, I do see the, the progress within the last uh, uh, 20 years. I really see it and I'm optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't take into account that the whole market will collapse <laughs> because it's <laughs> extremely weird and messy at the moment. And fragmented. And, and full of surprises and no one can predict anything. Uh, but yeah, otherwise... Yeah, we are doing quite But, but I think that we are also used to it, because we, yeah, yeah. from small countries, always somehow <laughs> survive. Yeah, yeah, we will survive at the end of the yeah, day, yeah, and because and what we've is been so, there, done that, so... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what is also valuable, you know, now uh, they are all the time at the European level highlighting collaboration, collaboration, mm -hmm. co-productions. I mean, this is something that is so normal and outgoing yeah, for, for us, us uh, yeah, we also well. have stable relationships, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the region, we are reaching mm -hmm. out also, uh, you are unusual collaboration, so but, probably got but very points. organic, very organic story-wise, and I think yeah. that's important also to have that kind of partnership, mm -hmm. but uh, for the um, EAVE, for example, I mean, I think I would recommend to everybody to apply for that, you really reach the core, like you meet producers around the Europe, mm -hmm. you get 
you become very close to them. You can reach them whenever you need co-production. You will call your EABE friends first to ask mm -hmm. or they will suggest you somebody. And you learn a lot. And all those like pitching forums are very important and trainings because yeah. sometimes you do know your story. And you very, I mean, you spend some time with your story. But uh, when somebody trains you how to explain to somebody who doesn't know, it is a different point of view. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something, that, that's a learning process. And I think it never stops, no matter mm -hmm. how uh, big, great, and um, experienced producer you are. I think... That's, that's always something you, you should always keep in mind and go to those training sessions. It's refreshing. <laughs> it gives you a new idea, a new point of view of your project and on the market in general. That's true, yeah. Uh, and uh, I also wanted to underline for, regarding the Vult TV series, uh, they were supported this year. It's not yet uh, officially uh, announced because of all those bureaucratic in the, in the process of signing the but I, I want to highlight that uh, it was the seventh uh, best uh, project to be evaluated among uh, uh, not so many selected 140 yeah, yeah. but uh, real like for example the highest points were 92 so they had 88 and yeah. some having 80 two or 81, they didn't pass, so uh, great work. Now, who wouldn't yeah. like to finance this TV series, though? Yeah. <laughs> but thank you also, I reach you uh, as uh, somebody who I knew before, uh, as a media desk person, and you gave those me those really, really, tips and really, really good advices, and I would always suggest people to reach their media desk. Uh, yeah, try to reach us and tell us when you're also applying, yeah. because we anyway get the Excel sheet and then we see, oh, this person <laughs> applied, nobody uh, contacted us, so we can still uh, help you out uh, before applying, because once you apply, it's, of course, uh, too late. Yeah. So... I think that we touched a really uh, important topic, and I hope that uh, uh, among the audience we also had the broadcasters uh, to understand that we really need your support uh, so that we build together a high-quality TV series and uh, uh, to be also a bit uh, usual suspects in the same uh, rank. And just if you have some final words. Uh... Well, I think Ankit and I will be available here with, uh, to talk with any broadcaster from our region and <laughs> explain <laughs> detailly <laughs> why it is important what we mentioned. What is blocking us? Just and what, an entire hour. And why it's good we'll for good. them as well. Because yeah. maybe they only see numbers, but sometimes numbers are not enough. It's yeah. a win-win. Yeah. To make a long Absolutely. story short, it's a win-win. Mm. Yeah. And Jonas? Um, Would you like to say? Or, you know, I mean, you well, can. I mean, if, if the broadcasters want to talk to me, then that's fine as well. <laughs> I don't know why you left me out of it. <laughs> because you're you can give yeah, your side. Right, okay. Um, um, no, I'm just... Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. And remember that, you know, the success of these projects is the success of media and vice versa. We will actually need you as a role model, like the Nordisk, like the Nordisk country as a role a model for our region. Okay, well, we that's another We want to do the panel, same, so we will mm. need you <laughs> in this talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Milena, Ankit, and thank Jonas. You. And you. good luck uh, uh, with the wool. And uh, we keep the fingers crossed for the last socialist artifact to still be seen in as many channels yeah, as possible. Yeah. yeah? And yeah. thank you, audience, for uh, being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.